Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, yeah, it's been a while uh, since I've done a video. Uh, doing this on my phone, uh, the camera on this is actually better than my laptop, but uh, my uh, laptop, uh, which is where I edit and record my videos, it's basically dead. I just can't use it for any kind of like uh, YouTube, I, you can't use it for anything really. Uh, so I'll probably just be using my phone to do my videos and then editing on my desktop, uh, I guess. Even though I'm so used to iMovie, I'm gonna have to edit with something else, but uh, this is just, I've been playing so many games, I don't have a time to, time to do a review for each of them, and so this is going to be another games I've been playing recently video. I want to just put some kind of content out. Um, so yeah, uh, a bunch of games here I've actually been playing recently. Uh, we'll start with the one I played a long time ago. I was supposed to do a video on it, and then iMovie like crashed, and I lost all my footage, so I'll just talk about it briefly here. Uh, I double dipped for this game, actually. Uh, Mega Man 11... Uh, here on the PS4, and then we've got the uh, the Amiibo uh, box set. I haven't opened this yet. It's it's still it's still sealed. Uh, I, I wanted the Amiibo. I knew I had to have it, but I wanted to play on PS4 for trophies. Uh, I I don't know. I'm kind of getting into trophies a little bit, but at the same time, if a platinum is too annoying to get, I don't bother. Mega Man 11. I I didn't get the platinum in this. It's it's you have to be a professional speedrunner basically to do it. So I was like, fuck that. I got most of the trophies, but uh, yeah, hardcore Mega Man fan, as as I'm sure a lot of you guys know. Uh, so I was like, super excited for Mega Man 11. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. I've beaten this game like five or six times now, uh, and I have some issues with it. Uh, I do think the levels are too long in this game compared to the classic series, and the checkpoints I think are a little too unforgiving. Uh, once you play the game enough enough times, it gets easier. Uh, but at, it was definitely a bit rough in the beginning. Uh, it was a pretty tough game that first playthrough. Uh, but the level design in this game is, is phenomenal, uh, especially when you compare it to Mighty Number no. 9. The, the Robot Master fights are terrific, like the best the series has ever been as far as those fights. Like really dynamic fights that are very like varied and have like different, like all sorts of different abilities. They almost, it almost tends to feel like a character action game sometimes fighting against these, against these Robot Masters. Uh, the double gear system that they've added is really cool. Uh, it's the the slow mo power is definitely more useful than the um, the power shot. Although the power shot can actually shred bosses early on if you don't have like the weaknesses. Um, it's the the story is nothing to write home about, but it's got some clever, funny stuff in it. Uh, the, the I think the biggest disappointment with Mega Man Eleven though is the music. The music in this game sucks. And I, I can't believe I'm saying that about a Mega Man game. The Mega Man games, even the worst ones, like Mega Man X6, has amazing music. This, it's all bland techno music. It, nothing stands out. I think the only song I like in this game is, uh, I think, what was his name? Not Plugman, the the electric guy. Uh, fuck, I forget what his name is. But his stage had really catchy music. The rest of the soundtrack is just so like bland it just doesn't stick with you it doesn't have the catchy melodies that a Mega Man game is supposed to have a uh, huge disappointment uh but the game itself is really fun it controls really well uh excellent boss fights excellent stages design I'm, I'm glad that this game and they've added enough uh so it's not like Mega Man 9 and 10 where it was just like retro throwback they've actually kind of improved uh and, and kind of progressed with this one it looks fantastic too I love it looks so much better when you actually start to play this game uh really vibrant colorful visuals in this game great animation uh yeah very very happy with Mega Man 11 I was a bit iffy on it the first playthrough but the more I played it the more it's kind of grown on me and it's probably it's actually probably ends up being one of the better games in the series it's certainly better than 7 and 8 uh it's maybe tied with like 6 I would say so it's kind of like in the middle of the series for me, but it's still well worth playing if you're a Mega Man fan, and Capcom did not fuck it up. Uh, unlike uh, Inufune, which completely, completely fucked up Mighty Number no. 9, uh, this is this is more like it. This is what I what I wanted from the series. Uh, moving on, uh, there's not really too much to say about Mega Man 11. If if you don't like, if you never like Mega Man, that's not going to change your mind. Uh, but I, I had, a, I had a, a blast with it. Um, let's move on to the other game. Okay, so I finished this... It's probably been more than a month ago now. Uh, Dragon Quest Eleven, and uh, if you've watched my videos, early videos, you'll know I'm not the biggest Dragon Quest fan. Uh, they've always been a little too traditional to me, a little too safe, and I know that's what that's the appeal of Dragon Quest, and I wouldn't want them to change it just to just to satisfy people like me that want like a more e experimental gameplay and 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 and, set, and setting and things like that. 
Uh, okay, so I, I finished the main game in this. I didn't finish the post game because honestly, I was tired of this game by the end. Uh, it, this I was hoping this game would kind of change my mind on Dragon Quest. It's a series I've tried to get into multiple times over the years, and it just it's never clicked. And this, unfortunately, I, I have to say, this didn't quite change my mind. I, I, it's certainly not a terrible game. I did enjoy parts of it. It's again though. It, it's it brings me back to what I was saying in my my Dragon Quest Five review. The battle system in this game is so fucking boring. Like, it's just, it's unbelievable. It's so simplistic. There's nothing to it. Uh, and it's, it's it comes to a point where you just auto-battle everything. There's, like, no challenge to it unless you do the modifiers. Uh, I rarely ever felt like I was in danger in this game. Uh, there's just, there's so few abilities. You've got, like, generic skill trees for all your characters, but it's not really fun to, like, kind of upgrade your characters. Uh, it's just the battle system. I get, I got so tired of it, like, 10 hours in, and this game is, like, fucking 70 hours long, just for the main game. Uh, it's also way too long. Like, I'm sorry, like, this game got dull by, like, the 30-hour mark. There are strengths to it. I mean, it's a gorgeous-looking game. Uh, I really do like the classic world map that this game has. Uh, it feels very old-school in, in a way that I actually like in that, in that sense. Uh, the characters are likable. It's got a likable cast of characters, uh, and it's... The story has some surprising moments. There's some surprising, like, uh, dark, clever kind of moments with uh, with the story, but it's it's still nothing special. It's a typical, like, chosen one, save the world type storyline, which I get. That's Dragon Quest most of the time, but I don't know. It, it gets a little tiresome after a certain point. Uh, the music in this game fucking sucks. I, I'll flat out say that. I like it with Mega Man 11. Uh, and a lot of people have been complaining about this, uh, the meaty soundtrack in this game, which... I mean, the instrumentation is kind of lousy, yeah, orchestral soundtrack would have been better, but, like, I still don't think the music in this game is that good, even, like, the, with the instrumentation aside. Like, the compositions, I just don't think are good. Uh, they're repetitive, they all sound the same, and it's, it's just, it's the same loop over and over again. Like, the battle theme in this game, fuck, I got so sick of it. I muted the soundtrack in this game after a certain point. I just muted the soundtrack and put on podcasts. That's how much I hated it. Uh, so, uh, aside from the fact that, uh, I forget what the composer's name is right now, uh, but he's a, he's a piece of shit in real life. Uh, and, yeah, his soundtracks, I honestly, controversial opinion, I don't think I've ever liked a Dragon Quest soundtrack, to be honest. There's a couple songs here and there that I've liked, but I don't know, I just don't look, really like Dragon Quest music that much. Uh, oh man, this is being really negative. I'm gonna get hate for this. My Dragon Quest V video is still my most disliked video. Uh, Dragon Quest fans just, if you criticize Dragon Quest, uh, they just do not, uh, I like that at all. But, yeah, I gave it one last try. At least I finished the game. I couldn't leave it unfinished, but, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's alright. The game, this game's okay. I, I didn't hate it exactly, but I... I, I think I'm good with Dragon Quest. It's just not really my series. Uh, and it, it sucks to say that, but uh, hopefully, though, the series continues on and, and sells, sells well. I don't know if the sales of this game are that good, but uh, I hopefully, for the fans' sake, that they keep continuing the series and it does at least decent enough in the West to get uh, more, more games. Uh, let's move on to the, the game that I've been absolutely fucking addicted to, uh, I'm pretty much done it now, uh, but that's uh, Pokemon Let's Go. I got the EV version here with the Pokeball, and wow, what a surprise this game has been. I fucking love this game. This is the best Pokemon game since the original Red, Blue, and Yellow. And now, okay, I'll admit, nostalgia, I, that Pokemon Blue was such an important game in my childhood. It was the first RPG I ever finished, I'm pretty sure. It was the first RPG I got obsessed with. Uh, everyone was obsessed with that game. And it was just, it was amazing just, like, talking with your friends about the game. Oh, where are you? What Pokemon do you have? Constantly trading and battling with them. And that, um, that level of, that, that community aspect, I haven't felt with Pokemon in a long time. And this is the first game to get that back. Uh, pretty much everyone I know is playing this game. And we've been, like, trading Pokemon between the different versions. I've been trying to fill the Pokedex. I've never done that in a Pokemon game. And a lot of people are complaining that, oh, the Pokedex is too limited in this game. That sucks how there's only the Kanto Pokemon. No, fuck that. I actually like that. That is actually good. One of the things about the Pokemon games I've hated in recent years is the fact that there's, like, 600-plus Pokemon in every game. So that catch-em-all mentality is just gone. Like, who cares? Especially when a lot of them, you have to, like, trade specific Pokemon with, like, have the Pokemon have a per certain personality type and holding, like, a different item, and it's just, it gets convoluted, and I, I don't like it. This, though, it's back to the original 151, all the Pokemon I know, uh, so 
as far as the Pokedex goes, I'm missing one Pokemon now. I'm just missing Sandshrew, and I just, I, I, because it's in the Pikachu version, I don't know anyone that has one. Uh, it's, it's so weird how Sandshrew is the one I'm missing. I've got, like, all the harder ones to get. Uh, if any of you guys are playing Pikachu and have, like, Switch Online and can trade with me, please, uh, let's, let's do a trade. I need, it's, like, the literally the last Pokemon I need to fill the Pokedex, which, man, I haven't done that in a Pokemon game since the original. Uh, but the game itself, I mean, it's a remake of Yellow. Uh, and the, one of the best things about this game is the fact that they've gotten rid of the random encounters. So they've replaced them with, basically, you'll see the Pokemon on the map, where in the, like, the grassy spots. So it's exciting to see the Pokemon pop up. If you're looking for a certain one, it's like, ooh, a Dratini popped up, finally. And you get into battle with it, and it's like a Pokemon Go-style minigame where you're throwing mini balls and trying to... Uh, basically time it. Uh, if you get like a chain combo, uh, you have a chance of a rare Pokemon coming up, especially a shiny. Apparently shiny farming is a lot easier in this game. And then you gain experience for capturing Pokemon. So you're capturing a lot more Pokemon in this game, and the benefit is that your whole party of Pokemon is getting leveled up at the same time. Uh, so you're not, you're no longer going through these annoying dungeons from the original game, like fucking Victory Road. Oh my god, the, in the original game, Victory Road, you're trying to like do these pushing puzzles and every two seconds you're getting to, into a random encounter. This game, you see all the Pokemon on the map. It's very easy to avoid them. Uh, and then you can get on with the, the, the puzzles. It's fantastic. I absolutely love it. Uh, a lot of people are kind of hard or dissing on it. Honestly, this they should do this for every Pokemon game in the future. Like, no no more of the random encounters. This is how you do it. It's, it's a streamlined approach that, that works uh, in the game's favor, I think. Uh, and then it's just, it's, it's, it's diff, it's funny comparing, like, this game to the more recent Pokemon games, where this game is a lot less linear. Some of the gyms you can do in any order, like with the original game, and it, there's a little more signposting in this game. Uh, off the top of my head, uh, I remember in the original Pokemon Blue, there's that guard at the gate where he's thirsty, and you have to get him a drink from one of the vending machines, and the game gives you, like, no direction whatsoever that that's what you have to do and in this game it's just like oh i'm thirsty i need tea and then eventually you get the tea and then the character that gives you the tea is like oh remember the guards they need tea go and talk to them and so it's like okay you didn't have to go that far uh, they didn't have to make it that uh, casual but um the game itself is generally fairly unchanged uh the post game's a little weak i must say uh for people that are like hardcore pokemon fans but honestly i just wanted to play this game finish it uh, and fill the Pokedex, and I've been so addicted doing that. Uh, it's crazy. I put in, like, the one day I put in, a, I've, I'm almost embarrassed to say this because I haven't done this in a video for a video game in a long time, like an eight-hour session I did. Uh, it was insane. Like, I just, I actually, oh, man, I love this game. I don't, the visuals are not anything special, I don't think. I, I think this game could honestly look better, to be honest, but uh, I don't know. I think it's just a, a, a streamlined in the right ways, and it's just a, a proper great remake of that first game the only one that i really loved so um yeah it's i don't know if you love pokemon if you have an attachment to that first game uh definitely pick this up uh the pokeball controller is actually surprisingly good too uh it's far more accurate than the joy con for throwing the pokeballs uh and then you get mew as a bonus so if if you are to get this game definitely try to get the uh the um pokeball it has integration with pokemon go as well uh which is which is cool if you if you play that uh, pleasant surprise, one of my favorite games of the year, uh, honestly, like, it's probably, like, my, like, uh, top three, uh, I, I can't believe I'm saying that about a Pokemon game, a series that I've kind of fallen off of over the years, and this has just kind of got me back, uh, man, just, this, just really, really great game, um, next we'll go with, um, Spyro, uh, the remastered trilogy, of course I had to get this, uh, I played the first Spyro when I was a kid, it was one of the very few PS1 games I owned, uh, so I have a bit of nostalgic, uh, attachment towards it, especially the soundtrack. The Stuart Copeland soundtrack is just phenomenal. Uh, one of my favorite drummers, he, uh, you know, I'm a drummer and he's been one of my favorite, uh, big influences. And so it's, it's awesome to know that he can do like this, an amazing like video game soundtrack. And you can put on the original soundtracks in these games. I would recommend it over the remastered ones. Uh, oh man, do these games look incredible. Uh, they did an amazing job updating these games. They almost look like a, a Pixar movie. These games uh, really terrific. Um, I've only been playing the first game. I haven't played the second or the third game yet. I've actually never played them, so those are going to be new experiences for me. Uh, the first game, I was surprised how much I've forgotten about it. Maybe it's because the environments look so different. I, I'm not sure. Uh, it's fun. It's, it's very simple. It's, it's kind of hilarious, the setup, how simple it is. Like, this, the bad guy, I think his name's Croc or whatever, he, like, turns all these drag, all the dragons to stone and it, to stone and you gotta stop him. Like, that's it. Uh, you get, like, no character development for Spyro at all. You get these funny kind of quips, but there's, like, nothing as far as story goes in, it, in this game. 
Uh, it's, it's, it definitely takes from the Super Mario 64 framework where you've got different hub worlds and then almost like pictures that you go into, which are the actual worlds. Uh, and then you're kind of collecting either gems, rescuing dragons, or getting like eggs, different type, kind of collectibles to kind of progress through the game and unlock new areas. Uh, very simplistic. There's only like a fire move and a charge attack. Uh, there's not too many upgrades or anything like that. Uh, and you're just kind of exploring these environments, collecting things, fighting enemies. Uh, it's, it's, it's fun. It's very fun if, if a bit simplistic. I'm, I'm just definitely curious to see how the series is going to improve from here. Um, I will say the flying stages in Spyro 1 are fucking terrible. I hate them. Uh, they control really poorly, and I'm sort of trying to go for the Platinum Trophy, and you have to get, like, every single collectible in one run, and I'm finding it very hard to do. I don't know if I just suck or or what, but I just, I keep bashing into things, and I, the time limit is so strict for it. Uh, so it's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's kind of irritating. And then some of the enemy designs, as far as, like, the way they can hit you, uh, feel a little, like frustrating sometimes too. I don't know, this game can be annoying. Some of the level design can keep, can, be, can be kind of irritating. Uh, so I honestly, I don't think I'm going to go for the Platinum Trophy because you actually have to 120% the game. You have to get all the gems and there's like 30,000 of them in the game. And I'm sorry, collecting 30,000 of something in a video game is never going to be fun. You're never going to, like, never going to uh, have, have me have fun collecting 30,000 of something. No, no fucking way. Um, so yeah, I'm probably just going to clear the game, finish it. That's the way I'm kind of enjoying it the most. Uh, and then kind of move on to the other two games from there. It's a nice palate cleanser from the last game here. The game I'm sure everyone's been playing. It's been selling like crazy. Uh, but of course that's Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, still not finished this. It's a, it's a beast of a game and I got addicted to Pokemon. So I kind of put it down for a bit, but I'm coming back to this now. Uh, I loved the first game. It's one of my favorite Rockstar games. I've, I've loved pretty much every Rockstar game though. I'm kind of an anomaly apparently. Uh, Rockstar games tend to get a lot of hate. Uh, I, I don't want to say them because it's too, they're too popular. I do think that a lot of them tend to be overrated. Reviewers tend to like just absolutely shower these games with praises that maybe they don't wholeheartedly deserve. Uh, and this game is probably in that camp. Uh, this game has been getting like tens all across the board, like 9.7 and stuff like that. I honestly, like this game is like an eight out of 10 for me so far. Like it's definitely great. I'm definitely enjoying it, but to call it like one of the best games ever made is I think a little ridiculous. Uh, the story and the character is phenomenal, like with the first game. I think that's this game's strength so far. Uh, I'm really attached to these characters. They're all ex extremely interesting and have a lot of uh, development to them. And it's just fun being a part of this gang. Uh, it's it's a slow-paced game. The beginning takes a long time to get into. Uh, the animations in this game are extremely slow. The movement is extremely slow. It strives for realism at almost every opportunity, and that can kind of make the pacing a little... A little dull at times. Uh, the mission design is varied and, and pretty fun. A lot of hilarious missions in, in here. And there's a lot to do in this game. Hunting, uh, side quests for you to find. The world is is like the setting is amazing in this game. A lot like a lot of varied settings. It's not just like the winter part in the beginning. Uh, it's it's a lot of different um, varied like weather and and, and 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 scenery and things like that. Um, the combat in this game is not that good. <laughs> I feel like the first game had better combat. I remember it being better, but maybe I'm wrong. It, or at least it's very similar. You still have the dead aim, which is, is cool. Uh, but I don't know. It feels a little clunky, the shooting. Uh, the cover system is, is pretty simplistic. Uh, and it's there's auto-aim on by default. And I tried taking it off. And it's almost impossible, at least on a console, to accurately aim in this game. So I turned auto, I am immediately back on. Uh, you really, like, the combat just boils down to finding cover and then headshotting all the enemies, uh, then using dead aim from time to time. But, I don't know, it always feels kind of sluggish to me. I, I don't know, I'm not crazy about the combat in this game, which is, isn't great considering that there's a lot of it in this game. Most of the time you're doing that or you're riding on your horse from place to place, which, again, the pacing, it's kind of slow. Um... I don't know. It's it's weird. I, I like a lot of this game. I like upgrading your camp uh, and kind of donating money to it and kind of upgrading your different parts of the camp to get like better supplies and ammo uh, and health and things like that. And just seeing that camp grow throughout the game is really awesome. You kind of change locations uh, as you get further throughout the game. Uh, and I'm liking a lot of the side quests and the hunting and there's all sorts of crazy stuff that can happen in this game. So yeah, it's, it's weird. There's a lot of things about this game I don't like, but there's a lot of things I, I do like. And overall, I am enjoying the game. It's just it's not a game I can get addicted to. I can only put in a few hours at a time before I'm kind of like, okay, I need something else, like kind of a palate cleanser, like Spyro, for instance. But um, yeah, it's. I feel like I might be slightly let down by this game. I, I'm not sure it's at the level of the first game for me, at least not yet. I do hear the story gets really good later on, though. 
Uh, apparently a lot of interesting things happen later on. Uh, luckily I haven't been spoiled to anything, but uh, very curious to see where it goes in that regard. But apparently it's like a 60 hour game. There's also the online coming out uh, soon. I think, which I, I didn't like the online in the first game that much, so I'm probably not going to play much of it here. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely enjoy the game. If you like the first one, I think for the most part you will enjoy this. Uh, it's just, yeah, I, I don't know. The greatest game of all time? No, nah, it's 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 not that good. Um, part of me feels like I might be I might enjoy Grand Theft Auto V more so far, but I don't know. We'll we'll see the more I, I play of it. But anyways, that's it, guys. Uh, what have you guys been playing? Uh, have you played any of these games? What do you think of them? Uh, and I'll see you next time.